This morning we're celebrating my calling to be your pastor here at Valley Community. We're also celebrating all of our unique calls by God. Now as Presbyterians, we understand that as all children of God, we are all called by God. We are all ministers. The Book of Order puts it like this, just to be good Presbyterian nerds this morning. This is coming from G, section 2.0101. The basic form of ministry is the ministry of the whole people of God, from whose midst some are called to order ministries to fulfill particular functions. Members and those in ordered ministries serve together under the mandates of Christ. Now this idea of God calling us in ministry is a bit of a mystery to many of us Presbyterians, right? So many of us who have served as deacons or elders of the church have felt anything but uniquely called by God into service for the church. If we were to turn to our neighbor and ask how God calls us into ministry today, I'm wondering what our responses might be. For many of us, there is this notion that one needs to be spiritually exceptional in order to serve God. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it means that the person would read the Bible more, or pray more faithfully, spend more time volunteering, or never use curse words. Well, I've got news for you. Many of our officers currently serving this church and many of us here today, including myself, would not consider ourselves spiritually exceptional with those qualifiers. So who does God call? The theme of my spiritual story is pretty similar to many of us here today. There never was a moment where I was knocked to the ground by the risen Christ like the Apostle Paul in some extraordinary spiritual conversion. No, God moved in small ways. But God did move in my life. I grew up in the blue-collar suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio, a city not entirely different than Portland. My mom and dad wanted to raise us kids in the church, so just about every Sunday we were expected to head to either Catholic Mass with my dad or to the local Presbyterian church with my mom. All four of us kids, my two brothers and my sister and I, lived pretty normal lives as far as we could tell. Now today my older brother works in industrial painting and design, living not too far from where we grew up in Parma. My younger brother literally went to Hollywood and now lives and works in Southern California in marketing. My younger sister just moved to South Carolina as an elementary school teacher. So how in the world did I end up here being installed as your pastor? I'd like for us to think about God's calling as we learn about the prophet Jeremiah over these next few weeks. Jeremiah was a youngster when God came calling, and unlike many of us, Jeremiah did have a pretty dramatic story to tell. We, we pick up in verse 4 of chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you, I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord God, truly I don't understand how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to Jeremiah, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build up and to plant. Now, not many of us will be able to compete with that story, per se, but there is still so much for us to learn. The first thing we may wish to take away from the story is that God acts first. We see this in a variety of stories, but here we witness that it was God who approaches and speaks to Jeremiah. It's God who tells Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
The second part is that Jeremiah will have his own reservations, of course, just like you and I do in our lives. Jeremiah has all sorts of excuses, just like you and I do. Jeremiah says, for I am only a boy. But God says, don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. God uses our very weird and quirky selves for such ministry. In fact, those things that we may consider hindrances or objects that may get in the way of ministry, it seems that God sometimes considers those the very best parts of us to use as examples for realizing God's kingdom. Finally, we read that God says, For you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. <laughs> Believe it or not, God does have a plan for us. We may not know what that plan is. We think it is one thing, perhaps, and then the very next day it changes. But fear not. This God who knows us and calls us and uses the very things that make us unique to realize God's kingdom, God has wonderful things planned. Now the tricky part is that sometimes we may just not know what that is exactly. God did not come to me like the prophet Jeremiah. I did not hear a grand voice. I did not encounter a flaming bush like Moses. I did not have the Holy Spirit descend upon me in the form of a dove like Jesus. I like to think that God called me in many small moments in my life. Now, as many of us have traveled in unknown places, we know that a simple small turn or a change of direction can lead to a whole new encounter. Go north instead of south on I-5 and the world is a bit different. Turn left instead of right at the, tra at the trail intersection while on a hike. And you may have a totally different experience altogether. Multiply a degree of change on a long journey for a ship or a plane, and they may end up on the wrong continent. I believe that these little decisions are all part of God's calling in our lives, which may lead to huge trajectories down the road. God moves within all of us, sometimes in extraordinary, grandiose ways, but many times it's in very small, almost unperceivable ways. Slight changes of direction, small nudges to adjust course. Today, let us all celebrate God's call in our lives. Let us follow Jeremiah along this wonderful, terrifying and transforming journey of listening for God in our lives. And may we never be the same. Thanks be to God, our Creator, to Jesus, our Teacher, and the Holy Spirit, our inspiration, moving within us all. May all God's children say, Amen.